Hello everybody and welcome back to another Golang tutorial. So in this video, we're going to be talking about methods. Now for those of you that don't know what methods are, essentially they are some function that we perform on an object. Now in this case, we can actually make our own methods for these type of objects. Now an example of a method would be something, so this is a student example that I've done here. It has a name, it has a list of grades, so a slice of grades that are in, and it has some age. Now an example of a method that we could use on student would be something like get grades, right? And what that would do is return to us all of the students grades. Another example could be something like is older than 18. And that could maybe return to us true or false, depending on if the age was older than 18. Another one might be get average grade, right? If we have a bunch of grades inside of this slice, so we have, you know, like 50, 70, 80, maybe we would want to be able to get the average grades. What I'm trying to do is just make you think about some operations that we might want to perform on a student. And that's uh, specific to a student, right? Only a student object will have the method get average grade because it'll be specific to the types of fields that are defined inside of this object. Now, I hope that's kind of making sense. You've probably seen methods before in Golang. I can't remember most of the ones we've used so far. But the idea is if we have some variable, let's say var x in equals five, right? Um, this isn't a good example, but we can write the variable, we can do a dot operator. And then just like we accessed when we had a student, you know, the dot name, what we'll do this time is we'll say dot get grades, right? If that's the name of the method, we'll put some brackets because methods are typically they're just kind of functions that act on a specific object. And then maybe inside of here, we pass some value or this returns to us some value, we store it in an array or whatever it may be or a list or an int or whatever. Uh, but this is the idea of a method you write dot whatever the name of the method is, and then some braces, maybe you pass a value, maybe you don't. But this acts just like a function except on a specific object. So let me show you what I mean. Let's make a student first of all, let's say s1 colon equals, let's go student, let's give it a name, let's call it Tim, let's give it a, I believe I have to do this a slice of grades. So we'll say that Tim's grades are 70, 90, 80, 85. Okay. And then how old 19. All right, so we've just created a student. Now what I'm going to show you how to do is how we can actually make a method that will return to us. Let's start really simple. And it's just going to return to us the age of the student. So what we write is this we write funk because we're just going to make a function that acts on a student object. Now this is where it gets a bit weird, we put brackets, and then we put some variable name that we want to represent our students. So in this case, I'm going to put s, we put the type that we want, which in this case is going to be student. And then here we put the name of the method. So this is saying that this is going to act on a student object. That's what this first set of braces looks like. And then afterwards, I'll say something like get uh, age. Okay, then I'll put my brackets. And now I just write a function like I normally would. So here it's going to return an int and then I'm going to put my braces like that. So what this is saying is this is a method that acts on a student object. It's called get age. It takes no arguments or parameters and it returns an int. So now what I can do is I can say something like return s dot age. And what this is saying is that when I call and I go down here and I go s one dot get age, this s is equal to whatever student I called this method on. So since I called get age on s one, and we have these brackets set up before here, s inside of this method will be equal to this student. So if I want to access the age of that student, I would just do dot age and then I can return that and that gives me the age. Now I know a lot of you are probably like, why am I doing that? Why couldn't I just do s1 dot age? You totally can. I mean, I get it. This is not a great example, but I'm just trying to show you in a simple case what you can do. You have this s, which is the student, and then now you can reference any of the fields from that student, do things with them, return them, whatever, right? And you call this on a student. Now let's say I went in here and for some reason, actually, let's change this to set age. So we want to change the age rather than um, get the age. Well, now we got to actually change a few different things. First of all, this is going to be set age, we're not going to return anything, we're actually going to take probably some age um, as our value. So we'll say age int. And now inside of here, I want to say s dot age equals age. So I'm changing the students age to be equal to whatever age they passed in. So maybe I say s one dot set age and I put seven, well, then we would expect that this student's age would change to seven. Now I want you to think though, very carefully, um, will this work? And you probably won't know the answer to this. But we talked about pointers in the previous video. And this is where they become really important. 
if I actually want to do this operation when I'm setting or changing anything about the student object, uh, so anything about this here, I actually want to change it so it permanently changes, then what I need to do is make this a pointer. So I need to make that a pointer. And now when I call s1.setAge, um, I'm hoping this will actually work. We'll see if I save this, if we get an error or not. Um, I think we're good. Yeah. So if I change this to a pointer, now what I'm saying is when I call s1.getAge, I actually want to get the pointer of s1 so that inside of here, I can modify the age value and it will change down here. I hope that makes sense. But let's fmt dot print line. Let's print s1 and then let's print s1 again. So let's have a look here. If we go go run tutorial .go, and let's see what our output is. Okay, so we get Tim and then obviously it has the age 19 and then afterwards it has the age seven. So this did actually change in here because we had the pointer. Now, if I change this and I get rid of the asterisk, let's have a look at what we get now. 19, 19. So although here, yes, we did change the age. Since we didn't pass the pointer, we weren't able to change it down here. It just changed kind of that local copy that got passed into this method. So the rule of thumb kind of here is that if you have a method that's modifying this object itself, you actually want to make sure that you have the pointer here. And for most methods, you're always going to want to use the pointer inside of this so that you have uh, your variable that's actually pointing to the original object. So you can modify, you can change things. If you just care about getting values or maybe like manipulating values or calculating something, which we're going to do in a second, then you don't need the pointer. You can just take the value. But common practice is just take the pointer anyways, because it's not really going to matter um, if you take the pointer versus not take it when you're returning a value. So I hope that makes sense. But what I'm going to do now is define another method and I'm going to call this method um, actually get average grade. So I'm going to say S uh, student and I'm going to say get average grade like that. And we're going to return a actually this is probably going to have to be a float 32 that will be the average grade. So inside of here now, what do I want to do? Well, I want to calculate the average grade of the student. Now, this doesn't need to be a pointer because I'm not going to be changing anything about the student. I'm just going to return a float 32 value that tells me the information about the average grade of whatever student we have. So first of all, let me get rid of some of this, uh, which means I'm actually going to have to comment this out. So we'll do that like that. And inside of here, I'm going to start writing how I calculate the average grade. So I'm going to make a variable called sum. I'm going to say sum colon equals zero. Oops, there is uh, easier ways to do this, but I just want to walk you guys through an example here and we'll say for underscore comma V. So that's the value colon equals range of in this case, it's going to be S dot grades. You can see it's even popping up for us there then. So this is accessing all the grades, right? Which is a slice of ins. We're going to say sum plus equals V. So we're going to add whatever the grade value is to the sum. And then finally, we're going to return the sum over in this case, it's going to have to be a float 32 value of uh, the len of s dot grades. So this should give us the average. We sum up all the values and then we divide by some float 32 just to make sure that this is float 32. And in fact, this is going to have to be float 32 as well. Uh, the len of s dot grades, which should give us the uh, the answer, right? Whatever that average grade is. So let's have a look at this. I'm actually going to say, let's say uh, average colon equals s1 dot get average. Why is it not popping up here? Get average grades. Okay. And then we're going to go fmt dot print ln of average. Okay. So I don't think I made any mistakes there. Uh, I know I went kind of fast. Oh, well, let's see. Oh, this is plus uh, colon equals range. That might've been the problem there. Let's have a look, get average grades. What's the problem here? S1 dot get average grades undefined. Oh, that's S This needs to be get average grade. Okay. So let's see now if this works, let's run the program and we get the value 81.25. So you can see this works. Now, the reason this is a useful thing to do is because what happens when I have another student, right? Cause you could say, well, oh, I can just sum up the grades down here. That's fine. Well, when you have another student that you create, right? And you want to get the average grades of them. So I say like S2 equals uh, Joe, maybe we add another grade here. So we say like 90, 90, 95. Uh, let's change the age to like 21. Now, if I want to get the average grades of this student, well, all I have to do is just say average two colon equals S2 dot get average grade. 
Since I've made this method, now I can use it on any single instance of a student. So any S1, S2, doesn't matter, any student I have, I can use this method. So it becomes really useful. So now I can print average and average two. So let's have a look at this and let's see what we get. Okay, so we get 81.25 and 85.71429. So that is kind of the basics of methods. Now, of course, like you've seen, we can take arguments inside of methods. They work the exact same way that a function works, except now we have a reference to whatever object it is that we're calling this method on. So when I do s1.getAverageGrade, s becomes s1, and then down here, s becomes s2. So here, of course, we're not getting the pointer, so we just have the values of both of these. But if we wanted the pointer, it's as easy as changing that to an asterisk. And now we can actually modify um, any of the fields inside of that object, right? So that is kind of the power of structs and methods, right? When we have things we want to represent that are more complicated than just an int or a bool, like they're a combination of fields, we make some custom object. In this case, I've called it a student. A student has a name, which is a string grades, which are a slice of int and then an age. And now I made this method so that any student I make, I can get its average grade. Now let's do one more and let's make a function that gets the maximum grade. So let's say func s um, student. We don't need the pointer here, but I'm going to put it here and then we're going to say get max. Oops, if I could type this properly, get max grade. And then in this case, we're just going to return an int because we know it's just going to be a slice of ints we're looping through so we can do that. So now I'm going to say cur underscore max or cur max. We'll keep our pattern here equals colon equals zero. And we're going to say four. Um, yeah, we'll go underscore V colon equals range of S dot grades. And we'll just say if cur max is less than um, V. So this is the grade. Then what we'll do is we'll say cur max equals v there you go so essentially if the current maximum value is less than whatever this grade is then current maximum becomes equal to v and then we can return current max so this is just storing the current maximum value uh, as soon as we see a value greater than it we'll change it and this will get us the max value from the array so we'll return current max and now let's actually just change this instead of average we can say get max grade just copy that method and throw it here get max grade and then of course we'll just say max and max two and then this will need to change to be max oops and max two okay so let's have a look at this all right so go run tutorial.go and we get to 90 and 95. So you can see that worked properly here. The highest grade is 95. Here, the highest grade is 90. And of course, you can go on and make as many methods as you want and use them in combination with each other. Um, really, it, it doesn't matter, right? So I'll zoom out a bit so you guys can kind of read everything that we've done here. But we made this student struct. We made some methods for the student. I showed you how we can modify fields on the student as well. We can make another method called add grade. And all that does is append to this slice another grade. That would be something that's maybe useful to do. Um, and yeah, that is kind of the introduction to methods. So I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in another Golang tutorial.